Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online on our complete back catalog at rce-cast.com. You can also find links to Jeff and mine's Twitter, um, our blogs, and all that usual fun stuff. Also, I have again Jeff Squire from Cisco Systems and one of the authors of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks a lot for your time. Hey, Brock. How you doing? Good, uh, good season here. It's, it's, we're just post supercomputing and post the American Thanksgiving holiday and so on. So we're back into the swing again, recording some more podcasts. Yeah, and so um, we we have one more comment. Also, I, I need to apologize. I dropped into your Open MPI State of the Union at Supercomputing for like five minutes and then turned around and left to go to something else. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything, but I noticed that. I was like, oh, there's Brock. Oh, there goes Brock. Yeah, so sad. yeah. Well, you were nice enough to put your slide deck out on the mailing list, so that's available <laughs> out there so everyone can get their Open MPI updates and what's coming in the next version. Sweet. Okay, so let's go into our guest for today. Um, our guest today is Thomas Summers, um, and he's going to speak to us about Open Compute. So, Thomas, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Thomas Summers, uh, founder, CEO of Rex Computing, uh, and we're developing uh, new uh, HPC focused processor solutions. Um, and so as part of Open Compute, uh, we started the group back in July, and um, I'm project co-lead along with uh, Devashish Paul from um, Integrated Device Technologies. And um, uh, we're trying to push uh, HPC into uh, uh, be more open and kind of bring that into the uh, uh, more data center and server-focused uh, Open Compute project area. Okay, can you give us a little bit of background on what Open Compute is? Most people, if they have heard of it, they probably associate it with Facebook or somebody like that, not someone you normally think of as being high-performance computing. So can you give us a little bit of background? Yeah, so uh, Open Compute was originally started by Facebook, um, and the general um, premise of it is to uh, what Facebook originally did is that they donated their um, internal custom server designs uh, so that both includes the mechanical, um, you know, the racks, the blades, how they're connecting them all together, um, and uh, new motherboard de- designs and everything. And uh, they contributed that. Uh, they started the foundation. They donated it to the foundation um, and got a, uh, a group from Intel, uh, Goldman Sachs, um, Rackspace, and a couple other comp- companies initially. And... Uh, they came together and said, uh, it's better for us consumers of technology to, uh, um, you know, actually define things that we need to have. And uh, if we design our own stuff internally to make that available so that everyone can uh, use that as a base and uh, contribute to making those things better. So the real goal uh, initially and has been up to now is to make uh, more efficient uh, data centers and um, server systems. And uh, we, you know, in the HPC world, uh, think that that's a a pretty good idea and something that uh, um, would be very beneficial for HPC users and HPC system manufacturers. And um, we want to bring, bring that to uh, the group. So you just say there about how it started and, and what some of its initial goals were, and, and some of those you said are the ongoing goals. But really, if, if you could put it in terms of, you know, what is the 10-year goal? What is the five-year goal of OCP? I mean, what do you, what do you see as down the road more than just uh, making designs for hardware available? Yeah, so the uh, up until today, I, I would say that that has been the, the primary goal with the um, base principle for the, the long-term viability of it is that these open designs would cover enough of uh, the different parts of the data center um, that if, you know, some complete new startup, you know, wants to build a, a, their own data center, they could take all of the pieces from open compute and go to some contract manufacturer um, or, you know, the, the idea is that the contract manufacturers would already be making open compute specific designs and those would be cheaper than the proprietary HP or Dell or whatever systems um, out there. And uh, that, that startup would just be able to take all open standard 
items and bring that and roll that and put it together and uh, based on the actual specifications would know exactly how um, everything goes together and make sure that it, it, it works. Um, and then if they have some new innovation that they've, you know, been able to improve something for whatever specific task that they're doing, that they can then contribute that to the community so that others would also be able to uh, benefit from it. Um, now, the, the longer term goal, which is now starting to, to develop actually with the HPC group, is most of what Open Compute has been up to today has been related to mechanical and at the, the lowest level being, uh, you know, your Gerbers for the, your actual motherboards. Um, and what we're trying to do with HPC is uh, bring that deeper into new, uh, new networking at a, a, a silicon level. So up to now, networking, it's been taking whatever off the shelf, you know, 10 gig, 40 gig, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever is out there, and then throwing that on a board. Um, while with uh, the HPC group, because of HPC demands for low latency and high bandwidth, um, where we want to focus on trying to bring, uh, uh, basically covering all of the areas that Open Compute does right now, and focusing on the specific needs of HPC. In addition to, instead of just doing the mechanical layers, we want to go all the way down to silicon. So you've kind of touched on them a little bit, because I have a little bit of familiarity with OCP, but can you, what are the big components of open compute um, that consists of the stack? And you know, what are, especially focus on the primarily different ones than you could say like the commodity world uses right now? Yeah, so with open compute, it's not uh, just one set standard. So uh, the the Facebook standard is uh, called Open Rack, and uh, Microsoft back in January donated uh, their own version, which is uh, very different. Uh, they updated that this past October. But um, the, the, there's no really one set standard. The idea is that the, the project allows anyone to contribute anything and people can pick from that what they, uh, they want to have. Um, so for the, the major groups of, that is part of open compute, there's uh, storage, networking, server design, um, open racks, uh, certification, hardware management, and the data center groups. Um, and each one is, you know, focused on accepting and reviewing submissions um, for their specific areas. Okay, so I actually got to see a one vendor's implementation of um, OCP server and rack. And one interesting thing was the rack was a different size and it used bus bar DC power in the back. Is, is that like a standard thing or is that just like what part of the community is looking at? Um, I would say that that's the majority. So that that's the open rack design that Facebook uh, initially contributed. Um, for what our, we're doing with the HPC group, we're taking that primarily as a base. Um, but just the 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 one thing I want to point out is that that's not uh, you know a restriction. You people there there are other contributions of different designs um, uh, for you know your racks and how blades and, and, and such. So, um, but yeah, the, the basics are the, the, the open rack rack, uh, is 21 inches wide compared to your standard 19 inch. Um, and it has, uh, AC power dumped into it and has a, a bus bar, three different bus bars in the back, uh, to distribute power to the, uh, um, all of the, all of the blades. So let me ask a dumb question. I'm sorry, I'm a software guy. What's a bus bar? Yeah, so um, a bus bar uh, is just a metal bar um, in the back, um, which is the uh, the actual power connectors. When you slide that into the rack, connect to it, and that's what distributes power to it. So one of the, the neat designs with open rack is that um, for the full uh, size unit, you have three uh, what are called power zones in, in the tech, in the actual spec, um, and those three power zones are each, according to the original Facebook contribution, uh, forty. One sec, I have to actually pull up the the spec. 
I believe it's 4,200 watts. Um, yeah, 40, 4,200 watts uh, for each power supply. So instead of each having uh, each uh, server blade having its own power supply, um, the idea is to have that distributed across the rack. And so every single blade is receiving uh, DC instead of AC. And so the, the, the actual conversion going from AC to DC only happens three times in the entire rack. And is there, again, software guy, I, I have very little knowledge about these things. Is there a benefit to that, uh, the DC to AC conversion, limiting that? Uh, and, and how does that factor in with getting DC power into your server, uh, into your data center, as opposed to AC? I mean, is that difficult? Is that cheaper? Is that better somehow? Well, you still have the same AC in your data center um, for when you have the the power supplies inside the rack because the the actual connections to the uh to to the rack itself are ac and then that ac uh power goes into the power supplies and that does the conversion so the advantage with having dc throughout the rack level is that uh you you only have the conversion happen uh three times in in this case so instead of going from uh uh, AC to DC, which most power supplies are around 80 to 90 percent efficient. Um, for when Facebook was designing this, they really wanted to have the the, the best power supply uh, design, so they're almost at 95 percent efficiency at their uh, their target load level for the the actual unit. But uh, um, the uh, the basic idea is instead of having that 80% uh, power lo- – or sorry, you know, 15 20% power loss every time you go through a power supply like that, um, which in a normal system would be happening at every single blade, um, the, the OCP model is to have that only happen once or three uh, – once per power zone. And that power then be distributed to all of the blades in that power zone. And the, there are three of those in the standard open rack model. Okay. And, and all right. So that makes sense for that one. And another improvement or, or at least specification that you mentioned was that the rack was wider. It was 21 inches versus 19 inches. What was uh, the rationale slash benefit for that? Um, I think it was really just uh, be able to fit more in, in – uh, uh, one in one rack. Um, in, I mean, area is relatively cheap, and so expanding, uh, you know, the the actual rack a couple inches uh, doesn't really hurt you in terms of just rack density, but in terms of what you can, how much uh, actual components you can fit in there, uh, does help a lot. And it's also easily dividable into. Uh, for for Facebook, they as part of that also contributed uh, what they originally called wind the first generation was called windmill and then now there's a winterfell which is the uh, dividable blade up into three seven inch uh, wide components so like in a lot of the cases in my 19 inch racks we're putting two nodes in that 19 inches so you're saying at 21 you're putting three so Correct. you're actually saving space Correct. Okay. So uh, we've been talking about all these things. So it sounds like higher density, higher power efficiency. This is all things that sounds like when we design a new HPC system, things we're concerned about because we tend to be space constrained, power constrained, things like that. So um, what else about OCP do you think the HPC community is specifically interested in? Yeah. Um, so I think that what ha- has been cr- contributed to the, the project so far um, is a good starting ground when it comes to the new mechanicals. I'm a fan of the open rack design. I think that uh, just having you know the bus bar um, is a nice improvement. And some of the things that we want to do in the HPC group with open rack specifically is integrating uh, networking into the rack itself. So not having to uh, uh, basically having dedicated, you know, uh, networking uh, spaces within the rack so you can connect nodes um, as we're assuming that you're going to be, you know, having this as a giant MPI cluster, for instance. But um, uh, 
as for what the, the rest of the project, we uh, are not trying to step on the toes of the other groups. And uh, we really want to focus on optimizing uh, both existing designs uh, from open compute and accepting new ones that are focused on, you know, uh, you know, just low power, uh, high performance, um, and fast systems. Okay, so let, let's go into this a little bit more because, like we said at the beginning here, you know, most people think open compute, think your Facebook and other data centric applic- applications and whatnot, and you're doing uh, HPC specific designs. Give us some of the the differences between uh, some of the other designs that have been submitted for, for OCP. What are you focusing on? And you just touched on a couple things, right? So, you know, fast network, um, obviously, uh, assumedly fast processors, but you also said low power, which sometimes uh, contradicts HPC requirements. So give us, you know, some of the, some of the high points of what your HPC focused designs are, are looking at. Yeah. Um, so I think for most of the HPC community, um, as we're, you know, all talking about having this huge, uh, almost insurmountable problem of getting to exascale, uh, that, that is primarily a, uh, power, um, constraint. And so, um, in, you know, the top 10 systems power is the, the, almost the number one, uh, constraint there. And I think that that's going to be felt by more and more systems as we get closer to, you know, a petaflop machine being your, your average, uh, uh, top 500 HPC platform in the, in the future. Um, just as, you know, teraflop and tens of teraflops are now the, the norm now. Um, but, uh, the, in terms of what we want to do specifically with the group, um, uh, we we have multiple phases set up as part of uh, um, the, the part of our charter, and so uh, this kind of first phase, which we're just starting off now, is taking uh, the existing OCP um, designs and reformatting them a bit, and to you know better suit the the requirements for HPC, and um, we're we're starting that as you know that that's the the most minimal amount of work. Um, and that's the plan that we have for the next uh, six months to a year where those designs would actually be, uh, uh, you know, finalized. Um, and actually that's already, we're planning on having those submissions uh, in the beginning of uh, next year. But um, in, in terms of the longer term, um, we think the big differentiating feature of the HPC group in terms of completely new contributions, will be things at the the silicon level, um, which none of the other groups are are touching. Ooh, at the silicon level. Okay, can you uh, can you expand on that? What are you what are you making? Yeah. Um, so part of uh, I guess my own company, we're a, a fabless semiconductor company, and so uh, that that's part of our goals. But from just the the group level. Um, we kind of the we we believe that uh, the existing you know semiconductor providers uh, that are part of OCP um, don't necessarily target their their silicon for HPC specifically, and so uh, what we want to do is have a, a set of designs that are uh, usable by both other you know semiconductor companies, so just, you know, specific IP specs for network on chips or chip to chip interconnects and things like that, um, to allow it for it to be easier to actually merge all of these different components. Um, and then from my own company perspective, uh, the crazy thing that uh, uh, we want to do is actually have a, um, open instruction set architecture as part of the group, um, that is targeted for HPC. And uh, as the group continues, um, we hope to contribute, uh, you know, things on the RTL level as well. So are you talking about both new CPUs and a new type of networking? So, you know, not your traditional x86-based CPUs from large companies that rhyme with Schmintel and ShmeMD? Uh Yes. <laughs> So that's uh, my my own company doing that, and we have uh, a couple others that are um, interested on the processor side. But the the main uh, silicon contributions or the the bulk 
majority of them will mostly be in the networking area. So both on chip, 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 and, uh, you know, just more targeted, uh, you know, node to node, um, silicon. Fascinating. So this is, uh, what, what kind of network is it going to be? Is it going to be ethernet? Is it going to be InfiniBand or something new? Well, we're open to contributions from anyone, but uh, in terms of what we're looking at right now is uh, things from primarily Rapid.io. Um, and then in the future, um, kind of our longer, this is the three, four years off, but uh, part of our charter is actually talking about the, uh, the future of uh, silicon photonics and how we think that as that's a new and emerging area that making sure that we have open uh, specifications for that um, is an important uh, uh, piece for the future. I guess one, one other point with that is uh, uh, that company that rhymes with uh, Mimtel, um, they've uh, contributed to the networking group, um, their own photonic uh, interconnect stuff, but uh, that currently only relates to their specific um, – uh, it, it has to connect into their processors. And so with the HPC group, we will obviously love to have contributions from anyone. Um, we do want to focus on b- having these systems be interoperable um, as in the future of the HPC data centers, we think that interoperability will also be very important. Um, And you don't want to be stuck into having um, one specific manufacturer um, as you upgrade your system over its lifetime. So you keep saying, you know, contribution, participation, stuff like that. What is the actual process? I mean, your company is one of these contributors. What's the actual process for the working group and contributing stuff and getting it in the actual repositories of the project. Yeah. So um, anyone can become a member of Open Compute, either as an individual or as a company. It's uh, free. Um, the only you know tiered um, paid levels are uh, – you can either become one of those tiered levels by either – contributing time and a certain number of specifications or you can pay for it but um you're only limited in not being able to become part of the um incubation committee which is the 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 high the kind of overseer of uh, all the project groups um but to become like a project lead such as myself um unlike a lot of other standards bodies you don't have to pay anything um and so for the actual processes, if you're a company that has a new specification, you would uh, join uh, Open Compute um, as an individual or a company. Uh, you would sign the contributor uh, license agreement, and uh, basically that's just saying that you're not going to sue other people for for using uh, your spec and you're giving it up. Uh, you choose what license you want to submit it under. For hardware, there's two. There's the reciprocal and the uh, uh, permissive license. So it's similar to, basically you can think of it as the reciprocal as being more uh, uh, GPL, uh, V2, V3. Um, and then the permissive is more like the BSD license. Um, and you submit that um, to the project lead for whatever group you think is most relevant for that. So if you're an HPC, you would send that to uh, um, Devashish and myself. Um, we would review it if we think that it's something uh, you know that's good for the group, um, which basically our check marks is that uh, you know you, you're actually contributing full specification for something. It doesn't need to be you know a, a full you know, services or a full blade or, or anything. It can be one very specific component. But if you're open about, you know, how you are plugging into it and everything um, so that, you know, others can look at that spec and make something that can plug nicely into that, um, most likely we'll, we'll think it's a good submission. And then we'll put that out uh, on the mailing list where people would be able to also see that. And then we would submit it to the incubation committee, which would actually – uh, review both our project lead comments, uh, the initial submission, and uh, then the, whoever submitted will be able to present that to the incubation committee, and they would have the uh, final approval. So you were talking about silicon before, and you know, and then you also mentioned to make sure they're actually c- c- 
contributing a full spec. When you're looking at something like silicon, do they actually have to contribute like the design of the chip or can they contribute like the interfaces to a chip? So I'm a network vendor and I can say, okay, I'm going to contribute, you know, for OCP. Basically, there's no cost to licensing the developer capability or the, AP, like, not, I don't know what an API for hardware is kind of thing, but like, basically, can they, like, how do you deal with like proprietary inside the chip, which normally people hold pretty closely, but then have this interoperability around the outside? Yeah, proprietary insights we're expecting as being uh, the norm. And so the the main idea is that we want them to um, be able to say, okay, here in outside of the, you know, NDA world um, to, you know, have their chip. And we have RapidIO, we have Ethernet, we have InfiniBand on this chip. Here's the connections for that. Um, here's, you know, all of our RADA, other things. And here's how to place it on a board. Um, that's kind of uh, how we see like initial submissions being. Um, hopefully, as we get further in the future and there's more uh, submissions on the component side, that um, as if there's a, a sp- open compute, uh, you know, specific um, network on chip or chip to chip interconnect or something along those lines. Okay, so this is uh, a fascinating blend of, of proprietary and, and openness. How, is, how do you envision this playing out, particularly when you said you know, at the beginning that your goals were that you could you know, go to a contract uh, fabbing plant or manufacturer or something and say, hey, build me this, but parts of it are going to be proprietary. How would they be able to build those proprietary parts in conjunction with the open rest of the system, or uh, did I misunderstand that? Um, yeah, so when I was saying that previously, that was more in relation to the existing um, OCP designs uh, for the you know mechanical and for the the board level um, systems, uh, not including the processors or that silicon. And so um, with the you know HPC group and trying us trying to open up the silicon. Um, we think that that's you know more of a, a long term thing, and uh, fabrication costs are expensive. So even if someone wanted to do that, um, I, most uh, wouldn't want to have, pay the upfront cost to go to Fab, and that's really um, go, go you know go to TSMC or Global Foundries or or one of those, and you know even if they had the the even if the entire chip was open, I doubt that. Um, many people would go out and have those fabbed um, on a whim. And so uh, uh, I still think that the actual semiconductor companies themselves are going to be very involved in uh, actually making those uh, in the future, um, and they'll be selling those. Uh, the, the point of it being open is just so that at the initial design level that an engineer can see those specs, see exactly how uh, you know, that should be placed in the system and design that without uh, the constraints of uh, NDAs and, um, you know, having to uh, go and talk to every single uh, um, sales team from all these different companies. There, there's a one place where you can go and see uh, things that are all supposed to be interoperable. So what has your personal experience been like working on open source hardware? Yeah, um, so I started uh, Rex Computing a little over a year ago, and um, our, our initially we were I kind of had the the goal of you know uh, being a semiconductor company, but um, initially the the idea was to just be a, a box manufacturer and taking off the shelf components. Um, but then back in uh, March of uh, this year, we uh, we're looking out there and specifically for the area that we want to target. We didn't see any uh, uh, chips out there that really met the, our needs. And so um, we started designing our uh, processor architecture. And uh, uh, come August or so, we had uh, um, some stuff working on FPGAs. And uh, um, we were, uh, you know, 
I'm trying to think of, okay, what's our actual business plan? We, we have some cool stuff running on FPGA with some nice demos, but uh, it doesn't really mean much if you can't sell it uh, or raise money or anything. So um, what I, I, that was when I was getting involved with uh, Open Compute and um, had the, the kind of crazy idea of, well, if we're going up and competing against you know, Intel and uh, these other giant behemoth uh, uh, companies that have the established um, install base. And we're coming with this new architecture that you have to compile, uh, uh, recompile your software. Um, how, could we, how could we ever break into the market? And uh, what we came up with is, well, why don't we uh, make it so that anyone can make compatible chips with us? Because if we donate the instruction set architecture and we have, uh, you know, quote unquote competitors with us that are making competing chips, um, that would actually be a good thing. Because if there's other people who are evangelizing the base architecture that we all share and have and are contributing to the software ecosystem, that is really just uh, uh, pushing the the architecture forward. And so this is, you know, in a similar way to, I think, how uh, Linux kind of pushed the the Unix ideas um, from the 80s and had it, you know, in the late 90s through the 2000s became an actual real uh, push against uh, uh, Microsoft, and you didn't see that when all every single company had their own Unix. So back in the 80s and 90s, Sun, HP, DEC, everyone all had their own Unix, uh, you know, piece, and they weren't really compatible with each other, and uh, none of them gained any significant market share, and they were just all fighting to the death. But as soon as or Linux came about and became significantly uh, stable enough, um, that became kind of a un- unifying place where everyone could go to that, use that, and share in the the the, the spoils. And each each company would then you know uh, make specific. They they would uh, uh, differentiate in their specific areas, and uh, that's how they would profit. Okay, so you just described the, the you know the process for uh, getting a spec in there. Uh, well, clarification question on that: um, is, is there discussion about these submissions? I mean, is there negotiation or whatnot? Because you said you're you know a, a, consider yourselves a standards body. So when somebody submits a spec, is there discussion about that spec, or is it more like here's my spec, uh, enjoy? Uh, you, you guys either publish that or, or, or not, right? Uh, you know, you accept it or you reject it. Um, is there more to it than that? Um, yeah, so the kind of points I, uh, I guess, didn't emphasize uh, previously were, um, so when it's initially submitted to the project leads, um, we talk with whoever submitted it. And, you know, if we have any questions, we hope to get it from them. And once uh, our questions are sufficiently uh, uh, satisfied, we put that out to the group mailing list. So um, the the kind of involvement place for everyone in the group, we have a, uh, a mailing list, um, which anyone can join. Um, and uh, that's where we discuss uh, submissions and just our general plans. Um, we also have uh, biweekly calls where we would also be go- going over those submissions. So you're a, a fabulous design, and you your company specifically focuses on certain pieces of it. How, what is the process do you see most OCP vendors? Like if I wanted to go buy one of these things, do you see them building all of the pieces based on the specs? Are they sourcing certain parts from others? Uh, what What are you kind of seeing being the norm? So I think the norm for if you're you know building a a, a system and uh, there will be a mix of if you have some specific uh, alteration that you need if you're talking with uh, whoever the contract manufacturer is uh, you can download the you know actual mechanical drawings and such of whatever the the open rack component that you want to modify you can change that up and then send that to a manufacturer and that that works pretty well at the the uh you know mechanical the the rack and blade levels um and then i'm also assuming for significant uh, a certain if you're a large enough company or project that uh you would 
be designing your own piece, your own uh, motherboards, um, which there's examples which are contributed to the uh, to the group, and you can modify that and get that made um, at some contract place. But when it comes to the actual semiconductor area, I still think that that's going to be uh, um, pretty tightly controlled by the um, actual you know, um, semiconductor companies just because the costs of fabrication are, um, so are pretty high and, uh, to, to do a run, uh, just to get the masks made are, you know, $5 million. And, uh, I I think that that's, you're still going to have to go to whoever, uh, you want the chips from They're They're, they are going to be the ones selling them to you. Okay, so you mentioned a lot of things uh, about the OCP project here, from the submission to the design to the goals and things like that. How can somebody get involved? I mean, more specifically, you know, what are the opportunities for different levels of involvement? And and by that I mean, you know, there, there's hobbyists out there, there's vendors out there, uh, there's academics and researchers out there, and things like that. What, what do you think are the opportunities for involvement for these or other types of groups? Yeah, so for Open Compute in general, uh, you can just go to the website, opencompute.org, uh, and read over the website. You can see a lot more about all of the other groups. Um, under the Community tab, you can click on Get Involved, and it talks about exactly what the uh, how to actually contribute and be, be involved in that way. But um, in terms of... Uh, the HPC group specifically, um, unlike many of the other groups which don't really have the academic or government involvement, um, we see that as being a particularly strong uh, part of our group for, for HPC. And so um, uh, we're trying to make it as easy for anyone to join. And the you know the simplest way without actually even you know becoming an official member of the, the, the project, um, you can just go and register for the mailing list. Um, which there's links to that uh, on the Open Compute website, and I'll also provide a link to, uh, to you guys to to go join that, and you can read through the archives and um, you know join, send an email, ask questions, um, anything, and uh, we're we're trying to just have it be a, a very simple process to you know start and ask questions. So for someone who's listening right now and, and, and uh, this sounds of, of interest to them, what would you say like were your top one, two, or three needs right now? Someone who's got a skill set that you could use or, or time or resources that you could use, particularly in the HPC group? Yeah. Um, so right now our, we, we're very you know early. We have not had any uh, submissions yet. That's our, our charter is not yet approved. It's going to be approved at the next uh, uh, incubation committee meeting. Um, but the the basic we currently have uh, uh, over fifty members as part of our mailing list um, from a wide variety of uh, companies. Every networking, semiconductor, storage, everything, all part of our HPC group. Um, but uh, what I think the the more involvement, at least, I would like to see, and I'm biased as a semiconductor guy, is I think others uh, involved in the the silicon um, would would be great. But really, anyone <laughs> um, where where we want the script to, you know, be pushing the the, the bleeding edge um, in all of the areas that affect HPC. The 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 basic idea when we're talking to other people within Open Compute, uh, part of the other groups is that we're working on the 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 specs for the systems all you guys will be using in five years. Um, since we think that the the trickle down uh, from HPC to more general data centers um, is just how things have always been, um, and that. Uh, we we want to focus on that and have that be more open so that in you know 5 years when uh you know data center requirements obviously continue to go up that uh, people will be able to pull from those submissions and start integrating those in, into their uh more commodity systems okay thomas again uh what's the website for ocp yep it's opencompute.org okay and thanks a lot for your time well thank you thanks thomas